Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Today I've got AMD's new RX 460 dedicated gaming graphics card. What is this? Why should you watch? Are you looking to spend less than $150 on a graphics card? Do you want to get the most graphics card for your money, both for today's games as well as future games? Yeah, came to the right place. You should definitely check this out. Now, I'm going to be talking about both the 2GB and 4GB version of this card in this video. I happen to have the 4GB here, but they each serve a purpose and I recommend them for different uses. I will also be comparing its performance to other cards at a similar price point and why you might choose this one versus those. But first, let's talk about games and general performance. I want to separate them into two categories. Gaming, casual games, and esports titles. What do I mean? League of Legends, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Rocket League, Dota 2, those type of games will all generally play on what's called integrated graphics, an iGPU, what comes with your Intel or AMD processor. They will, but generally not at high detail and generally not at high frame rates. If you're a competitive player, if you want to turn the graphics detail up, you need a dedicated gaming graphics card. But you don't have to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars to do it. Those games will all play at maximum detail, over 60 frames a second, at full HD or 1080p on this card without any issues whatsoever. Now that's casual and esports titles. What about AAA titles, the big marquee titles from like Electronic Arts and Activision? Do you want to play Grand Theft Auto V, Fallout 4, Battlefield 4, Witcher 3? They will all play on this card, and they won't all play on integrated graphics. Most of those type of games do not play either at all or worth bothering with on integrated graphics. But on this card, they'll play fine. But you have to compromise the detail level or the resolution. Allow me to give you a specific, specific example. Grand Theft Auto V, set to very high detail at 1080p resolution, will run at about 30 frames per second on this card. I don't consider that playable, and the reason for that is because 30, seconds is, 30 frames per second is an average, half will be higher and half will be lower. There'll be too many times in that game where it'll be 15 to 20 frames a second, it'll be very choppy. But don't worry, there's a solution. 1080p, full HD resolution, normal detail. Grand Theft Auto V, almost 60 frames a second on this card, it'll do it just fine. So if you're willing to adjust detail or resolution, it will play AAA gaming titles. Now having said that, if you're serious about playing such titles, you should really consider AMD's RX 470. It's $60 more than this card, but it's almost twice the performance in a game like Grand Theft Auto V. That's a big, big difference. So if you're looking for a card primarily for games like The Witcher 3 and Grand Theft Auto V, I strongly suggest you, you dig down in those pockets and spend just a little bit more and get an RX 470 or 480 instead of a 460. But if you're primarily interested in League of Legends and Counter-Strike Global Offensive, don't waste your money. This will do it beautifully. Now what about the 2GB versus 4GB version? If you can spring for it, get the 4GB version. The 2GB version is almost exclusively re reserved for esports titles like League of Legends and stuff. There's nothing wrong with the 2GB version. It will play those games and it will play them for years to come without a problem. But the limited frame buffer will become an issue in years to come. If you do want to casually play higher end games than that, I strongly recommend the $20 extra for the 4GB frame buffer because two to three years from now, you may not be able to play the latest and greatest games within just a two gigabyte frame buffer. Even today, Grand Theft Auto V will not play above normal texture quality on a, two, on a two gigabyte card. It's limited because of the memory size. On a four gigabyte card it will, although performance can be an issue. So four gigabytes if you want to play the AAA titles, two gigabytes if you want to play the esports titles and save a little bit of money. What about other cards of similar price and performance level? I'll use another specific, specific example here. Grand Theft Auto V, NVIDIA's GeForce GTX 950 will play Grand Theft Auto V faster than this card, which is remarkable considering the 950 is almost two years old, but it will play it faster than this card. Now wait a minute, you ask, why am I recommending this card? Let me turn the tables a bit because Grand Theft Auto V is about a year old and it's a DirectX 11 title. 
Hitman is a new title for 2016 and it's a DirectX 12 title. And Hitman is faster on the RX 460 than the GTX 950. The GTX 950 is $10 less than this card and only has a two gigabyte frame buffer. So while it will play Grand Theft Auto V faster at normal detail, it's limited there because of the frame buffer, those are the older generation games. Those are DirectX 11 games. At the beginning of this video, I said, if you want the best card for under 150 for today's games and future games, that was a key point. DirectX 12, this card will beat out the current generation of low-end AM, uh, excuse me, NVIDIA cards because they're not as optimized for DirectX 12. Now in the future, that's going to change. I'm sure NVIDIA is working on making future cards better for DirectX 12. But for now, there's a lot to be said for this because of the fact that in new DirectX 12 games, it closes the gap and beats the older cards on the newer titles. So if you're buying a card for the next three years, I think this is an excellent card. What about AMD's other cards? This is actually very similar in performance to AMD's R9 370X card. A little faster in some games, a little slower in others, very similar performance. But again, if you're buying a card for the future, buy this one over that, even if the other card is $10 less. This one has newer features, HDMI 2.0, newer video decode and render features, it's got the fourth generation of Graphics Core Next, which is AMD's internal structure of their chip. So you're buying a newer generation chip. What this means is that while today it's similar in performance, two or three years from now, I fully expect this to be faster. Those cards, the uh, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 950 and the older AMD cards, are as optimized as they're ever going to get. They've been, uh, their drivers have been updated for several years now. All the performance we're ever going to get out of them has probably been gotten. This has been out a month. I fully expect that over the next year of driver updates, AMD will improve the whole 400 series of RX cards. So at a similar price point, even if this card is $10 or $20 more, I would buy this one for the future performance game gains that you are likely to get. Now, having said all of that, let's take a look at the card, shall we? The box on these is definitely, oh, there we go, smaller than on the big cards, but that's okay, it's a smaller card. It will fit into more machines more easily. Now this is the Sapphire Nitro version. This is a factory overclocked card that comes in a very basic cardboard box. There are also versions of these cards from um, Gigabyte and PowerColor and other brands. Pick your preference in terms of how it looks, what price you can get it for, what's in stock. They're all pretty much the same. It's not gonna make any difference performance-wise from one card to another. Now this is a factory overclocked card. It'll be 5% faster, give or take, than the, than the standard cards. However, there's a trade-off for that I'm gonna show you here in a second. There's a driver disk, which you shouldn't be using. You should go to amd.com and download the latest drivers from AMD. Support and let's see what's in here. Quick installation guide written in a bunch of languages. One language every two page. What else is here? Important product registration. Join Sapphire Select Club and get rewarded. Basically give us your information so we can add you to our mailing list. What can I say? It's pretty straightforward. Put this over here. I like the fact that this comes in a padded envelope. Uh, too many cards only come in anti-static bags. This comes in a padded envelope, that's nice. Sapphire is, by the way, my understanding, is the number one manufacturer of AMD branded cards. Well, look at that, that's nice. Set this over here. It does come wrapped in plastic to protect it. You'll need to take that plastic off. So we'll do that right now. Make sure you get all this off because this will trap heat and you don't want to trap heat inside your computer. I'll put that in my handy dandy trash pile. Is there any other plastic? No. So this is what the A, um, excuse me, AMD RX 460 Nitro Edition from Sapphire looks like. You have two fans. It's, uh, you've got a single six pin PCI Express power connector. It's worth noting, this is not going to affect performance. If you look along the bottom of the PCI Express slot, there's actually only golden fingers on half of it. 
That's because all the RX 460s are actually X8 cards instead of X16 cards. It doesn't matter. The, these don't have nearly enough performance to matter, but they are in fact 8X cards for whatever it's worth. Ports, Sapphire gives you three of them. And let me take off the protective covers. You have got a full-size display port. This will support 4K at, I believe, up to 120 hertz. Not that it matters on a card like this. You also have an HDMI 2.0 port, which will support 4K at 60 hertz. And then you have a DVI-D port, which will support up to 1440p on a dual-link DVI cable. These ports are all overkill for the card, but they're all digital. Please note, you cannot use a VGA monitor using one of the cheap small D-sub adapters. This is a digital-only port. There are active adapters if you have a VGA monitor, but do be aware if you're upgrading from an older graphics card or switching from integrated graphics and you have a VGA-only monitor, the 15-pin the, um, the blue connector, you will need an active adapter. Uh, you can't just use the cheap $2 adapters to plug into the DVI port. Now, multi-monitor support. This does support three monitors. You can absolutely hook up multiple monitors. You probably can't game with multiple monitors. It's not gonna have the graphics power, but maybe you wanna put two 1080p monitors on your desk, game on one monitor while having chat or watching Netflix or just browsing the web on the other monitor. This will absolutely do that. That only takes away three to 5% of your overall performance, if that, sometimes it does less. But multiple monitors, if only one is gaming, the other one can absolutely have a web browser open. It's not gonna hurt you, so you can definitely do that with two or more monitors if you want. I mentioned the power adapter before. Now this is a factory overclock card, so it requires a six pin PCI Express card. It's worth noting that this card doesn't really need that connector at its factory clock rates. But when they come out with the Nitro, the, the Nitro is just the branding from Sa Sapphire for the overclock card. They put that on there so it can run over 75 watts. I will put two links in the description below, one to this card on both Amazon and Newegg, and one to the Gigabyte card. I actually have ordered a Gigabyte card. It isn't here yet, but I will do a review on it as well. The difference between the Gigabyte card and this is overclockability, this has more headroom because it can pull more power, but the Gigabyte card has no six pin power connector. What does that mean? That means that if you have a computer that does not have a dedicated six pin PCI Express power connector coming from your power supply, you can take the Gigabyte card, plug it right into your machine and use it without worrying about adapters, cables or connectors. If you have such a, mean, a machine, I strongly recommend you get the Gigabyte card rather than the Nitro. If on the other hand, you have a six pin PCI Express power connector, by all means get the Nitro. It's a little bit faster, not a lot, but hey, it's Nitro, it must be faster. So that is the AMD RX 460 graphics card. How it compares with the other cards that are similar in price point to it, I will be doing live benchmark demos. I've been putting some numbers up here to give you an idea in terms of AAA titles. Again, remember, eSports and casual gaming, it's fine. 1080p, 60 frames a second all day long and everything you can imagine that isn't a big name title like Battlefield or Grand Theft Auto, it'll do all those just fine. But I will be doing live performance testing where I put a computer here, I put a monitor here and I play the game live because it's one thing to see performance numbers and it's another thing to see how well the game really plays. Like the video if you like it, don't if you don't. Remember to subscribe to my channel. That's how you'll get notifications of upcoming videos such as the live performance videos of this card as well as the Gigabyte card which I have coming as well. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, put those in the comment section below the video. Let me know what you think. Do you like this? Do you not like it? Do you agree with my conclusions on what cards it's good for, whether you should buy the two or the four gigabyte card? And then finally, as I mentioned before, links to this, both the two and four gigabyte version of the Sapphire and the two and four gigabyte version of the Gigabyte will be in the video description below to both Amazon and Newegg. Go check those out. Find yourself the best deal. Buy it wherever it costs the least. Thank you very much for watching my video. I will see you next time.